excited? I hope you're excited. This is a wonderful conference, isn't it? All right. Well, time for someone who's a little bit of a bummer. But I'm an exciting bummer. Hi, everybody. So, as the wonderful organizer of this conference said, my name is Jason Scott. Uh, I am a historian, archivist, filmmaker, famous cat maintenance staff, irritant. Irritant, that's a great one. What does an irritant do? Well, you know, an irritant kind of reminds us that we're alive, doesn't it? And, and so that's kind of what I'm kind of in the business of. But in the last four or five years, uh, and I'm in my 40s, so, uh, you know, this latest phase of my life, we do go through phases, um, I'm kind of more like the angel of death. And so what that means is, that means that when things are going on awesome, you don't know I'm there, but then suddenly I show up in your life and you're like, why is this guy here? <laughs> What's he up to? What's he doing? And, and, and then you, like, the rumors start spreading that something, things aren't as good as they could be, and this guy is showing up in your life. And, and the reason for that is because I've become really associated with the death of websites and the death of projects, the death of business. That those moments when a business has decided that it's not going to do what it's doing and shift or pivot one of the most one of the most lightning names you've ever seen. It's, it's, it's up there with casualty, but when they decide to pivot into death, I'm there making noise, saying, what have you done? And, and the thing is, is that basically my job has been to say that um, the industry, whatever industry it may be, is focusing on the wrong thing, right? Let's go back to basics, right? Like the internet, all right? I just decided to grab three things off the internet. They have no thematic thing except for they're based off the internet. One of them is a Hostess Cupcakes parody using Breaking Bad characters, which somebody just did. Not for money, not because he wanted to like, you know, sell it to you, you can't buy it on a t-shirt. He just thought, wouldn't that be funny to have a, a comic book ad about Breaking Bad and meth production and it uses the language from it to produce this ad? On the upper right, we have a wizard in a Trans Am flying through space, <laughs> just because he could. And on the third one, um, I'm sure most of you might have heard about this weird thing in New York where someone decided to land a plane in the Hudson River. Um, so this shot was actually taken about 15 or 20 minutes after it landed. And what it was was a ferry going across the Hudson River Pulled, <laughs> pulled over because there was something cool happening. There was this plane in the water. And, and these are all the people on the wing, sitting up, standing on the wing and on one of the boats, and somebody just snapped the photo with his cell phone, and it was up on the internet within that period of time, scooping everybody. It was just up. We knew immediately what was going on. Uh, on a side note, and I, <laughs> I am the master of the side note, um, you know, one of the, there's a line from, from, from Sully, uh, Sully Sullenberger, who became a, uh, the, the pilot who landed this plane like this. Um, they had asked him, you know, how did you do this? You know, how did you turn your plane when you discovered that you had hit a bird and you landed in the Hudson River and nobody died? And he said, my life had been a series of putting small deposits of knowledge and learning into my account so I was prepared when I had to make a rather hefty withdrawal. <laughs> what an amazing man that he would speak like that. that so, so yeah, so the internet to me is, is great, and I've been involved with the internet for a very long time, right? Um, but you know, it, it has become a little bit more commercialized, a little bit more commodified. It's not exactly the, the, the rough and tumble world that some of us might know, and some of us wish it still was. This thing, for instance, was me going to the Google image search and typing internet. This is the first hit. <laughs> you type internet into the Google image search, this is the rich, wonderful history you get. You get a big, fat vector image of a thing clicking on a web image. And the internet isn't just web, but man, at least maybe the second one, you know, the second image is good. But no, no, in <laughs> fact, that's the second image for internet, right? The internet is the browser. You know, speaking of planes, the way that I describe the way things were with the internet before it became what it is now is that, um, you know, when planes first started up, right, you can be reasonably assured that everybody on the plane, which was usually two people, knew how to fly the plane. They, they reasonably had an idea that, like, how to get around it. They probably knew how to prepare themselves for emergencies. They knew how the plane worked. Um, you know, they probably built it themselves. That was great. 
Uh, fast forward to today, you can have 500 people on a plane and maybe three people will know how that plane works. Like most of the people who are riding in that plane, they're enjoying the power of flight, they're enjoying the amazement of being able to transfer around the world, but if anything goes wrong or if there's anything weird, they know that the bag won't fully inflate. That's about it. And, and, and that's kind of what we've done to the internet, isn't it? I mean, that's what we've done. We've basically said, you know, at the rate of being able to have lots of people involved, we've said basically if the bag doesn't inflate, it's okay, and, and just turn it off and turn it back on again, which has become a joke, but now they've just engineered all the equipment to do that, to turn the power switch into the evaluation switch. That's what we've done, right? Um, but there's another part to this that's really kind of gotten to a person like me, and that's that the internet has quickly become this weird party. This party of startups, startups, where people get together and drink while making internet. <laughs> that's, that's what we've decided a party is, right? It's, it's this huge, crazy party. We're gonna have a launch party. It's startup week. We're gonna be hanging out. There's so much beer here because this other startup has funded this startup party. And we're all, you know, and, and so great. <laughs> wow, what a great, th parties are awesome. I'm not anti-party, please do not think I'm anti-party. Look at all these wonderful places that are just starting up, actually. Um, actually, I'm kidding, actually, I get sicker every time I look at this thing, because you start to realize just how boring it is with the adjective noun and the if I, and the, you realize that this is a bunch of people who are cargo culting their way through life. They've, they've heard that the internet is where money is, they're going to make the Facebook of cat tags. They're going to make the, they're going to make the Twitter of Instagrams. They're going to make the vines of, of, of you know, mail. And, and <laughs> like someone seriously get, got up and said, I'm going to name my thing Waham. <laughs> and you know, right now somebody is looking at the image of this thing in about three weeks on the, on the Vimeo site going like, Waham is a good company. <laughs> Screw you, it's called Wham! Um, Rainbow, great, awesome, that's it, that's what we've brought in. So, so in this world right now, we have all of these beautifully designed little logos. They remind me very strongly of these wonderful books that I found of like 19th century logo books. Very similar of like, you know, the J.R. The, the, the J.R. Weasley Apple Co., you know, just producing this wonderful thing. All right, you know, it is an awesome party, okay? But here's the problem, here's the problem. Um, the internet's no longer just a, an experiment, right? We know this now. Like if the internet goes down, we feel it. We feel it hard. Food does not get delivered. People have trouble. Heat becomes an issue. Oil becomes an issue. I mean, we need that internet. That internet is important, right? But we're still treating it like it's one big, crazy, happy-go-lucky party. Problem is, parties end. Parties finish. There's underwear in the tree outside. You don't know how it got there. <laughs> and you can't find your socks. And, and that's, that's the party we're living in, right? Well, so the way that the endings of parties express themselves in this world has become particularly infuriating for me. One thing you're going to find is that I'm very furious. <laughs> I'm furious. I'm furious about this. I'm not kidding. It's not fake fury like I feel your pain. I'm angry. I'm a white hot ball of anger in here. I take pills to quench it, right? <laughs> TripAdvisor acquires Wanderfly, which I think to most people is a joke in itself, just in terms of, okay. <laughs> Foobarm has just acquired Blackbog. But yeah. TripAdvisor acquires Wanderfly, and you don't have to read this, it just says, we bought Wanderfly. <laughs> Followed by Wanderfly talking about goodbye, right? Team Wanderfly says, wasn't this great? You don't have to read this, by the way, I can translate it for you, it's this. <clears throat> Screw you. <laughs> Same thing with Ancestry and Thousand Memories. Ancestry.com acquires 1000memories.com and has this beautiful image of a permanent beloved artifact of home photos to say to you, this is our logo. Our logo is this permanent feeling of your family memories, followed immediately by 1000 Memories is Closing <laughs> with an image of a cat <laughs> looking into the distance. <laughs> 
Coincidentally, this text down here also says, screw you. And, and the reason for that is because this has become the new template, right? A company is created for the purposes of selling that company to someone else. And that normally wouldn't be a big deal, except that these companies are taking over our cultural heritage. And they're pushing it on people with absolutely no warning about the nature of their business, which is transient, short, brutal, and really, really drunk. We're excited. We're excited. I hate this language. We are excited to announce that we've been acquired by Instagram. 18 months ago, we embarked on a mission. This sounds like they are in the Gilgamesh epic. The only <laughs> thing that's missing are swords. There's no dragons or swords. We are excited. And then, second paragraph, burying the lead. As part of our move to Instagram, we are shutting down the Luma service. We want to make this transition as painless for you as possible. Here is a link to download your videos. We'll support you until December 31st. I believe this is like 60 days after this announcement. And then please don't hesitate to contact us at this email address that will stop working. And so much thank you. We couldn't have achieved this, right? I've said this before. This is like shooting somebody and saying, don't worry, I've got plans for your car. <laughs> your car is going on an incredible journey. We've been acquired by Yahoo, which might as well be saying, we found a lump. <laughs> We're excited to announce that Yahoo has acquired bread. We'll look back on that and say, what goddamn life did you live in, Grandpa? And I want to point out again, for the next 30 days until November 11th, we will support bread links that our publishers created. We highly recommend our publishers swap out their bread links with new links from Bitly, a URL shortener. <sighs> right? I mean, can you imagine? That's what we've come to is that somebody actually says, like, in our business, the thing we do is no longer what we do. We suggest a competitor take over what we do and that you have a good life. Bye. But we, you know, we've bought into this. This is, this is the core value, right? It's time to say goodbye. And this is when you can see, while the last two years have been an incredible journey, we've made the tough decision to discontinue the do service. I don't know what the hell the do service is, by the way. A lot of these come from the same place, uh, a place called ourincrediblejourney.tumblr, <laughs> um, where a friend, Phil Guyford is basically collecting all of these because they all use the same phrase, our incredible journey, our wondrous path we have taken with you and goodbye, right? Because they're forgetting about what got them there, right? What got them there is the users, <laughs> right? That's why they're in existence. They're in existence because human beings thought this service was for them and was being provided for them. I know people are getting disturbed by the fish. It's okay. It's okay. This happens every day, and they're delicious. I promise you, someone ate them. Someone ate them. It all worked out. It has a happy ending. Not for the fish. Not for the users. But somebody ate well with the users, right? We, you know, people, people who do startup, the startup culture that kind of now exists, believes very strongly that the users are an interesting chattel that's along the way to their journey of success, right? And to me, that's completely backwards, right? Um, you know, uh, we are now in a position now where the internet is, like, really taking over, right? This quote. <laughs> okay, so this quote, um, I learned about this quote from Neil Gaiman. And it's a very interesting quote. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the conjectures of Isaac Newton. And Gaiman likes to refer to this thing in the particular story that he used it for as the beginning of the end of the world. <laughs> because it's basically Isaac Newton going, I think we can actually transform mass, which means eventually we can make explosions, which means we can make the atom bomb, which means that we can destroy ourselves, because that's what we do. So in this harmless statement, are not gross bodies in like controvertible, convertible into something that comes danger down the line, right? Um, similarly, in the early days of the internet, this is, uh, this is my representation of the early days of the internet. Um, 
but this is actually the early days of the early 1990s of the internet. So we're going to start from there, right? Previous to that, it's owned by schools, it's uh, supported by government, it is almost 100% a scientific project. It's I've got I've got um, messages in some of my archives from 1983 with people screaming at each other about posting things about Star Trek, <laughs> talking about how that's ruining the internet. <laughs> I found a guy who just said, you know, you, all you people do is talk about Star Trek, and it's really expensive. It's costing us thousands of dollars to transfer this Star Trek information, and I can't justify these costs to my bosses. And I remember I wrote the guy. I found the guy, because that's what I do. I found the guy who's now in his 60s. And he was like, yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really nail that. But similar to the light and gross bodies comment, you know, you try to say, okay, where do things start to be a problem? And um, so I'm going to take a jump at that, right? So this is very early Netscape 2.0. And, and up at the top, you got the back button, the home button, reload button, print button, find button. I want to find something in here. I want to open up a document. You know, I want to reload the page. Most of these are very familiar to you. The web structure is very similar. Everything's pretty good. The blue means click on me. That means get it. Eh, I get it, right? You look around to Netscape 4.0. Now you have security. So, security. Um, so, so the security in this case is SSL. And why do we have SSL? In theory, SSL was provided because you want to be able to keep secure communications. But we were doing that already. We were already doing that with PGP. The reason that that is there is so that business can come in. It's a prerequisite of business. So. It's innocent. It's an innocent move. It makes sense. Business should be able to do transactions under relative, relatively secure. But one of the things it does is it dumbs things down. If that little padlock is unlocked, that means insecure. If it's locked, it means secure. That's, that's your, that's your, there's your, there's your red light. Red light's on, we're cool, right? This is the beginning to me of where we start saying, well, what about business? Where is it going to go? And again, not a, man, not, not a man who's against people earning money, but I'm against people earning money and acting like the money culture is the entire culture of the internet. The internet is amazing. This is the first known case of commerce on the internet in the standard sense of what we think. This was where you would basically put in your phone number, and if you lived in Santa Cruz, um, they would deliver you a pizza. There you go. That's when it... You'd stamped it out then, it would have been nothing. But, but, you know, this was the beginning. This was the beginning. And it's obviously gone crazy. You know, this is just how many people, and by the millions, were jumping on within 10 years. And you can't scale technical brilliance and technical awareness. You have to make it dumber. You have to make it easier. And you could do weird experiments. Because this was weird. You know, internet kind of sold itself. What an amazing thing the internet is. You can get pictures of a wizard in a Trans Am there. That's amazing. And, and the thing is, is that so basically you'd sign up, right? You'd sign up and, and you'd pay some certain amount of money and you'd do some cool experiment. Look what this person's doing. Oh, they put up a page where you click on it. You know, there was this joy, this experimentation. There were no rules. It was just, what's gonna happen, right? And we started to see sites come on and the problem was, was it was so expensive to host that companies started to do what we now refer to as free to play which is a wonderful misleading term, by the way. Free to play. Um, it's like calling drugs free to shoot. And, and so we gave it to them, right? And we started with GeoCities. Here's a little memorial. Um, <laughs> somebody sent this to me. You know, a lot of us will talk about GeoCities. And the reason why is because GeoCities is the perfect storm of the violation of the social contract of the internet. Um, started out as Beverly Hills Internet in 1994, renamed itself to GeoCities. It had a really weird setup where you would basically become part of a, a community. You would declare what you were. Were you Western? Were you gay? Were you, you space? Was it, uh, you know, uh, um, technical? You became a neighborhood. And, and in the neighborhood, you would set things up. It was actually pretty awesome in its weird little way, but it was free. And you had this really weird plan. Again, this is something, you know, people don't remember what it was like. Um, basically, you know, this is, this is GeoCities, by the way. Um, on GeoCities, you would get a, a gigabyte of bandwidth a month, but you could only use it across the month. They took that gigabyte and divided it by the whole month, and each hour, you could use, like, 30 megs of it. 
that, that went away. So you could actually hit reload pretty fast and, and somebody couldn't, their, their site was down for the rest of the hour. <laughs> and you're like, wow, look at all that stuff up there. That is nine gigabytes, which was the, the whole size of GeoCities at one point. Um, GeoCities grew. It got millions of users. It was acquired by Yahoo for many, many, many millions of dollars. And it was, in 1999, the third most followed website of the internet. Uh, by 2009, it had dropped down to merely being the 190th, I believe. So it was still pretty popular. And then one day Yahoo said, we're out of the GeoCities business. They killed it. They murdered it. They shot the thing in the face. And the thing with that is that in taking away GeoCities, that finally brought it to head to us, that the old internet was dead and the new internet was this weird place where you could depend on nothing. Now, the primary ethic that I'm talking about here, and again, I, you know, just like, if you have somebody who's like, I don't think we should burn down schools. All right. If you're like pro school burning, um, anything the guy's going to say to you is probably not going to really sw swing. So let me give you my ethic. My ethic is that our online presence has become as vital as our offline presence. All right. Theory being, right, that the same rules we have about how we live in the world itself have really got to start applying to how we live online. If you start to take on the burden, the painful burden of acquiring people's memories, people's photographs, their history, their culture, their, their humanity, you are taking on the same burden that a landlord or a doctor or a policeman or a service takes on. And I'm sorry you can't just adjective noun your way away from it anymore. It's a real thing now. People are putting their lives online. And they're going on and they have no idea how the plane goes and they have no idea other than the bag will inflate. <sighs> See, everything dies. And, and I know, that's like, I, I know you're like, Jason, come on, dude, make it a little more somber. But the thing is, is that fundamentally, the constructions of what we create, these online worlds we make and everything else, have a lifespan. And that's fine. The journey is great. It is amazing to have this wonderful world. But worlds move on. And what happened is that for some reason we forgot that. So it's all about startup. It's never about shutdown. We have no plans for shutdowns. We, right now in this world, when a website is gone, they make up how long they can stick around. I've seen everything from one year to 48 hours, randomly. And I get told about a lot of shutdowns. For instance, just yesterday, uh, Yahoo has announced one of their URL shortcuts is going away. Well, sorry, they've said that they are making it read only, which is, you know, the dog's going on a trip. Um, <laughs> and so it's going read only. And they said, we will revisit this in three months. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, I don't need to skip ahead in that book. So it just happens, right? And then they say 30 days, you got 30 days to get it. Now, these, some of these websites have been around for 10 years. And they will email everyone that there's been 30 days for them to completely upend how things are. You know, if you do that to a community, they write books and make movies about it 50 years later, about how terrible that was. But we're doing it now by the millions. It's just that it's online and it's silent. But it's real, right? You go to Yahoo GeoCities, this is your response to, this is what's left, right? <laughs> Sorry, we're closed, right? And, and... There were millions of accounts there. Wikipedia had 100,000 links go dead the day that GeoCities went away. Because GeoCities was just in that period of time when we were like, well, how does a serial cable work? And somebody would make the canonical page on serial cables, and then suddenly serial cables aren't as important anymore, but that thing still lives on as a reference. Oh. This is a photo... Uh, I, this, is, this, is my, uh, this is my other really big example. Um, okay, so there was this photo community called Tableau, T-A-B-B-L-O. It wasn't until I said it out loud like a month later I got the joke. Tableau, like a tableau of photographs. Got it. Um, and Tableau basically allowed you to put up these photos 
and then write a little story at the bottom, a tableau. And so, um, in fact, there's a wonderful tableau of the tableau offices getting flooded by uh, fire suppression equipment. And the guy mentions how he was taking photos for his tableau until he figured out, wait a minute, it's destroying tableau. <laughs> All right, so, so tableau basically got bought out by HP. And HP also bought another company. Um, I think it was called Snapfish, but it might have been Shutterfly, or it might have been called Ketchup Face, but <laughs> it was something like that. And then so suddenly these guys, I don't know, they bought two services that were the same. So what do they do? They leave them in the same room with a broken pool cue, say they'll come back in an hour. <laughs> Came back in an hour. The other guy was just standing there with a, with a, with a bloody pool cue going like, I guess I'm winning. <laughs> so Tableau was given 60 days to, to vacate. And now here's the thing about Tableau, right? So Tableau had been heavily marketed, for reasons I don't know, to young mothers. Um, for some reason, you would basically take a photo with your phone and you could upload it to the Tableau service. And it was a lot of young mothers. How do I know that? I know that from the letters, right? Because we downloaded Tableau. We downloaded Tableau in two days. Um, we downloaded just hundreds of thousands of sets of photos. And mothers would wander in after five, six months after Tableau was gone, wrecked, that all of the photos of their child were gone. Their entire childhood was gone. And, you know, um, geeks are interesting. Um, they hear about that, and they're like, well, I would have had a double backup. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that's like walking to a car accident and saying, I would have worn my seatbelt. You are not helping the car accident victim <laughs> by informing him about his opposite issues he could have done. This tableau is of a man's house burning down. And at the bottom, he says he lost everything. It burned to the ground. But thank God, I have everything on tableau. And two months later, they deleted everything. So he got to lose everything twice. <laughs> I started a group. Um, archive team is an activist preservationist group, which, which, which is a very interesting combination of words. We're very angry people who save things. <laughs> and, and so what we've done is, I uh, started in 2009, we have about 100 plus common members, we've had many other visitors, and archive team is kind of the court of last resort of these shutdowns. So people will come to us and say, it turns out this is shutting down. And we'll be like, we better download it. Because once it's deleted, the conversation is over. So we download it. We downloaded a lot of GeoCities. We downloaded uh, Fortune City at one point. We downloaded um, AOL Hometown. We downloaded um, photo sites. We've downloaded URL shorteners. We have a whole variety of teams working on a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I hate every day that we have to exist, right? I'm not happy about this. I mean, activism is fun, and it should be fun. You should be able to wear wings somewhere in, 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 you know, and, and, make, and make noise. But the fact is, is that the fundamental reason we exist is because of this fundamental misunderstanding of what the ethics and world is. If you have a URL shortener, first of all, you are terrible. Just so you know, URL shorteners are the worst idea on the internet, period. They could not come up with a better one. You're going to come up with, you're going to basically take it so that you have a URL run by a third party on God knows what and utterly depend on your connections because you wanted to save a few characters, right? It's like a one-time cryptographic keypad for history. Um, URL team, which is a splinter of, of, of archive team, downloads hundreds, hundreds, there are hundreds, can you believe it? Hundreds of URL shorteners. And then keeps that Excel spreadsheet of shortener long thing. Because in 20 years, you're going to look at Twitter and be like, what the heck is TCO? Everybody puts stuff on there. And so the same way we have wiki team, which has downloaded over 5,000 wikis. Because those are important, and nobody downloads them. And it's this constant mental game in the group. What's going to go away? Who's going to disappear? And the reason why is because we have no policies about shutdowns. And the policy for the shutdown should have been on the same day that they designed the start of the business. 
right? Um, one of the things that drives me nuts, you know, with, with, with all this stuff is that you have shutdowns where they say, we're working on an export function. It's like the building is burning and we're working on a fire escape solution. <laughs> I mean, that is a serious thing. You know, the reason that I'm going off on this in this crazy rant to you guys as designers is because you are going to be in that room, right? You are going to be in that room and somebody is going to be talking about, bah, 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 and look at this, if we attach the Facebook to the Twitter and we push in the Vine and we pull it up through Snapchat and then slam it down through Instagram, we're going to have this kind of cross-pollination brand awareness uh, uh, cavalcade that we're going to be very proud of because we're going to push it down through the major... Um, um, major channels and social channels, and then we'll just have a complete total brand meltdown and we will be rich, right? <laughs> and, and you, you can maybe be that person in the room who just goes, okay, and what's, what's our export function? What's our, what's our shutdown policy? Um, there's this asshole with wings that I saw once, and he, he flew down to me and said to me, what's my export function? And I think that's really important because it should have been chosen from the first day. You know, vendor lock-in is stupid. I understand. When you're running a business, you are cravenly afraid of anything coming in and pushing away your little dandelion of a business. I get that. Your little dandelion, if it's too open sourced or if it's, you know, the, you, whenever the phrase secret sauce shows up somewhere in the conversation, you know you're in the shit. But the secret sauce will be revealed or whatever. But it's like, no, everybody knows how you make a cheeseburger. You put cheese on a burger. <laughs> Like, nobody's going to take your precious little business plan. Ideas are everywhere. It's execution, it's follow through, it's personality, it's how you are. If somebody's going to take away their stuff, good, get rid of those people. They don't like you. Don't make them stay because they don't know any better. Make it that you're saying, come here. You know, a hotel doesn't keep your stuff. <laughs> when you're done, uh, you know, and so, so, you know, that central, that central move, if I get one of you to do that in the next 10 years, and it, it comes so quick, it's like censorship, you know, it's like violence, it's, it just comes to you and you're like, before you know it, you're in it, and you're like, and this is when you make that, that snap decision to, to raise your voice or to go, why don't we have this, or why don't we have a library for export, why don't we have this, it's that moment, right? Because, because people are just now just doing these crazy things with the internet, right? Where they're just sucking it. You know, we now, okay, it took 18 months for Flickr to get 1 billion photographs, which is a scary number, right? It took them six months to get their second billion. Um, between Instagram and Vine and Twitter and Facebook, we are now pulling in 1 billion images a day. That's what we're doing right now. We are sucking in the culture, and it's going to grow white hot, we have no idea what Facebook is going to do. I'm not a huge fan of Facebook. I use it. But, I mean, I mostly like Facebook because I can look up a famous person and try to chat with them before they figure out who I am and block me. <laughs> I like that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> that, 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 that gentle amorphous blob of weirdness where we're all in it together. Um, but, but Facebook itself has, you know, Facebook is in, in for the now. Facebook is not in for the later. There's no heritage there. They created an export function, which was the most perfunctory, useless thing I've ever seen. It was so obviously to mark off some antitrust concern, because somebody was starting to make antitrust noises at Facebook. So they made an export function, but it's like literally like your stuff somewhere. And it would give you an HTML-ified list of everything you posted and nothing anyone else posted on your timeline. It's terrible. It's not an export function. It's, it's, it's a checkout. But they can do it because they're the big powerful thing, right? Um, you know, one of the tools that we use to do this work is called the Archive Team Warrior. And this is an example of what people who are activists can do with both a technical approach and everything else. The Archive Team Warrior is a distributed preservation of service attack. So <laughs> what it is is basically we set up this situation where we have some sort of a event, this particular one was MobileMe, 
Apple gave people one year to get off of MobileMe. Okay, that was nice. Um, MobileMe turned out to be 232 terabytes, which is large. One person, angry as they are, could not possibly download that. So instead, we had piles of people downloading these things. And what I like is that it's got achievements, right? <laughs> You're w Kenneth is winning. <laughs> I like that. DC Morton is coming up on Kenneth, but no one's going to kick Kenneth's ass. <laughs> you know, Wyatt's trying his best. And then over here, uh, these are the different, uh, as, this is scrolling like absolutely crazily. Uh, this is letting us know which kind of things are galleries and publics. And this low orbiting ion cannon can just descend upon a site and suck it down. We caused a, a, a one month delay in the shutdown of the Italian social um, network Splendor because we downloaded from them so fast they crashed. <laughs> and people were angry at us, you know? And it's like, they threw the guy out of a window and they're sorry somebody shot him before he hit the ground? <laughs> Is that what they're angry at? I'm like, you were deleting all their stuff. Somebody froze you because they were saving a copy. Splendor, by the way, is like GeoCities, but with more nudity, um, <laughs> if you have to describe it. Um, so, so, so Splendor basically had to delay it because they didn't have enough, I mean, which means they didn't actually, it's like a bank, right? They didn't really have enough bandwidth to provide backups to everybody. And once it's over, it's over. So we downloaded it all. Um, it took us about two and a half weeks, but we did it. Just to, because otherwise the conversation ends, right? Tenant actions end when somebody burns the building down. Well, we didn't want the, the, the preservation discussion to end with these things. So, so this thing, you know, here's, this, is an, this is an amazing project and it's 100% volunteer because 100 people have said, I get it, I get it. You know? So maybe the lesson you come from here is how to set up people uh, to get involved in something you're doing if there's something you strongly believe in. I believe in preservation. You might believe strongly in something else. And uh, the answer is, first of all, honesty. If you can fake that, they'll go for anything. Um, but the second one is to constantly clearly say to my volunteers, this is the core value of what I'm trying to achieve here. I think things should not be deleted with such, you know, just throwing it away. I think we need to think about this. And the conversation ends when they delete it. Help me save it in the meantime. When, I, when we show up, it's not always so, so, so pretty. Um, I've certainly gotten a lot of bad name calling, um, and I always find that interesting. Um, there was a site that just shut down whose name I totally am forgetting. It's not because I'm afraid. I don't seem like the kind of guy that's afraid, huh? Um, I, I forgot their name, but they had like 100,000 accounts, and their dealie was like, you could build a website on your phone. So you could like do this and do this, and suddenly you had a website. And uh, they had 100,000 accounts, and they had been around for about two and a half years. And they were shutting down to become a fashion site, a fashion photography site. And they were just deleting everything and they gave everyone seven days. And I got really angry. And so I tried a new tack, which was to shame everybody who had ever been involved with it. <laughs> that got me a warning from Twitter. Twitter which allows some of the most amazing gender warfare in the world, said that this person has complained because you said that his, he's deleting all this stuff and he's uh, a detriment to humanity. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I tried that, I tried that, the direct shaming. And then one guy privately wrote me a letter going, no, 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 here's the guy who's the jerk, the CEO. So I printed that. Um, <laughs> so now two people hate me. And I guess now they hate each other. But it was interesting to me because the guy was like, you know, you understand, you're, you're, getting, you're getting angry at the wrong people. And I was like, no, you are all in this together. Your smiling, stupid faces were on the about page up to the day you were deleted. If you're on the about page, you're on my list. Okay? <laughs> Check me out. I'm working on a great thing. And then one day, whoo, it's that lack of responsibility that drives me nuts. Um, I go around speaking. Um, I'm much more effective in this costume than I was with this costume, so I want to stick with this costume. But, but the thing is, is that the reason, the reason I do this is because I, I'm good at, I'm good at like attention, you know, attention getting. I, I thrive on attention and caffeine. And, 
And I also, like, I think reaching out to people about the moral aspect of this is as important as the technical aspects, right? That's what we walk away with. Um, you know, the, the whole, you know, dark angel is cute. It's cute to get into people's faces. But I believe this so strongly, right? I mean, you are going to design tomorrow's world. And tomorrow's world is going to have a lot of people depend on it. They're not going to know what you know. They're not going to say, oh, it's on virtual rack-mounted space, which means it's located in the cloud in some strange way. They don't know that. You have to remember that. You know, there's a beautiful poster, which I couldn't find in time, of, of the wonder of plumbing. And it was just about how the plumber, it's, uh, I swear to God, it's real. It's, it's like this plumber, like that, looking up like that, talking about how they are the defender of hygiene. They are our move, they, they, they are our warriors in the front lines of protecting who, you know, the health and the safety of the citizens. That's what the plumbers believe. And you as the designers are going to decide how the world sees itself. You're going to decide how the world interacts with itself. You're going to decide how awesome the world is in some ways, right? You're going to be part of that journey. And all I'm asking is that you remember that the journey does end. And that's part of the journey. Journeys are much, much cooler that they have an end. It might be a sad, ignominious end, but it's an end. And you go back and go, that was crazy. You know? So I'm actually about hope, because I am a thing with feathers. And, <laughs> and the thing is, is you know, I'm very lucky. I work at a place called the Internet Archive. Okay? So it's archive.org. And the Internet Archive is um, a nonprofit located in San Francisco, and they acquire websites, books, movies. Um, last year we had 10 petabytes of data. This year we have 15 petabytes of data. Um, we have years and years of television news. We have um, over 2 million books scanned online. Scan a new book and put it online every 90 seconds. Websites, oh, websites. The Wayback Machine is thought to be one of the crown jewels of the internet. It goes back to 1995. It is, it is just a beautiful piece of work. And I was so proud to join up with them three years ago as a free-range archivist. What the hell is that? What's a free-range archivist? It means I go to people who have things and say, you have cultural stuff. Can I put it online for free forever with massive amounts of bandwidth and disk space? They like that. Um, you know, I had a case where there was this 90-year-old man, and what he had done was he had basically had this huge acetate record collection, and he had collected thousands of them from the time he was teens. And then what happened was, was that as he got older, he wanted his sons to enjoy it. So to get them interested, he started recording them onto tape along with introductions to what they were going to listen to. And he's very dull. <laughs> so let's not sugarcoat this. But he is very dull. But he's just, you know, it'll be just... Count Basie was one of the most important of the uh, musicians who uh, worked. He originally got his start with Decca Records playing. Here he is playing a clarinet in the background of the song. It's one of his first. And then we hear the song. And then he goes, you know, Count Basie moved on to this orchestra where he played in this. And then he plays that off of one of his other records. So really, in his own way, he created this massive educational knowledge. He recorded it all on audio tapes and then sold the acetate because his sons didn't want it. And uh, sons didn't want the other thing either. Um, and uh, so what does he do? He donates it to a school. And the school took it and they digitized it into WAV files. But they had no place to put the WAV files. So all I had to do was go, I got a place for your WAV files. And the David W. Niven jazz collection is now playing to thousands and thousands of people who are discovering it. And David Niven is delighted. The school is delighted. They have their kids use it. And they, they scanned in all of his notes. They have all the liner notes. They have everything up there. That's one story out of a thousand. I've personally uploaded 400 terabytes of data to the Internet Archive to save it. And that should be a happy ending. Uh, about a week ago, um, the Internet Archive had a fire. This is actually inside of our building. This is the uh, servers. 
that people know. We keep them in the church. Why not? And uh, this is the scanning center uh, last week. So my company burned. Now we're lucky. We didn't lose any data. We don't do that. <laughs> we don't fucking lose data, all right? It ain't gonna happen here, all right? But we did lose a scanning center. We lost $600,000 worth of scanning equipment. Um, we destroyed a small amount of books. And I mean, I really do feel bad for a few people who gave them, who, ha who happened to have books in the pipeline for us to save. And we're like, hmm, burned them. <laughs> Which is the exact opposite of saving them. <laughs> we're very lucky. Um, the real rare ones are, were not there. They were kept in a separate room as they often are. And that, that room, the, the, the firemen, we had people at four in the morning pulling them out and getting them away from the building. Um, there was a conduit, there's a power conduit right here that turned out to power some of our, uh, the rest of our building and it burned. So I learned another important lesson, nothing is safe, right? When the internet archive can burn down, <laughs> nothing is safe, right? So please don't have that complacency. Please do not have that complacency. Um, you know, here's a cute puppy while I tell you the rest of this, because cute puppies make you want things. Um, like the cute puppy says, you know, I'm serious. Um, this, this, we're doing it, right? We've done it. We've put online. We did it. We won. We wanted this awesome technology that allowed us to be ourselves throughout the world. You know, people are putting up items that their entire genetic line could ne never have reached an audience that high. We were hearing stories that were buried, disappeared, right? That is amazing. Every day, remember that, right? We are living in amazing times. You can't beat what that is. But remember that with those times, with that designing, with that work comes responsibility. And we are taking on that heft of responsibility. It is deep, it is strong, but it is real. All I ask is that in that important critical moment in your lives when you get to make that decision or be the extra voice, please be that extra voice. Maybe not even for preservation, for remembering who, you know, who you're serving, remembering why you're doing it, who it's for, all of these questions. It's not just about having the party and waiting for the party to end. It's about being the people who herald the next generation's knowledge of who we are. And remember, if you're at your startup, working away to make a difference, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> you'll look out the window, you'll think of me. And all I'm asking is please, just don't disappoint me. Thanks a lot. <laughs>